Hello IBCS students, this video is to help you build your user interface for your internal assessment. So what I'm going to do is uh, walk you through my sample idea uh, for a uh, project and uh, obviously mine will be a little bit different than yours but hopefully the things that I do will match up with some of the things you want to do and at least give you a starting point or a point um, that you can use uh, to ask questions from. So uh, first, so I'm creating a brand new project here, it says Untitled Project up top. I don't want it to be an untitled project. I'd rather have that be something meaningful. So let's call that uh, store project. So I'm creating a store with products and customers and all that kind of stuff. So I've got my store project. And hopefully at this point, you're at a point where you have mocked up some screens, uh, either on paper or you've drawn them with a drawing program on your computer. Um, but you are at a point where you know what your project should look like and you know how your users should kind of flow through the use cases of that project. And so I've got, like I said, I have a store and so I have several screens that I want to go through that I've already thought up and uh, I'm going to kind of walk you through creating a couple of those and show you how we can um, build the interface together and then what we'll do uh, in a later video is link that user interface to the work you've already done hopefully in building your database tables uh, in the data element. So, but again, this is about the user interface. So I'm going to start, I want to uh, go to the design tab here and I'm going to start with my login screen. So like I said, this is a store and so I want to be able to log in as a customer to this store. So uh, first I'm going to rename this ID. So I'm going to call this my uh, login screen. Now I like to name my elements with something meaningful and then an underscore and then the type of thing that it is. So for me, uh, login underscore SCR, SCR tells me, okay, this is a screen and it's a login screen, okay? Uh, great. I also want to have uh, a whole bunch of other different kinds of screens. Like I want to be able to have an activity screen. So once they log in, they get to choose what they want to do, right? They might want to view their order, their past orders. They might want to place a new order. Um, Maybe they log out, right? So I'm going to add another screen. Notice I haven't even done anything with this login screen yet. I just sort of created it and named it. I'm going to add a second screen. It says screen two up here. I'm going to rename that. I'm going to call that my activity screen. Again, these are things I've already thought of ahead of time. So you have your own screens that you've already thought of ahead of time that are different than mine. But once I've created that, you can see I've got two screens here now available. Uh, and I can always, you know, if you have another project, you can import a screen or you can click new screen there or simply drag the screen icon over either way. So let's create a new screen with the new screen. Okay, I also, on top of my activity screen and my login screen, I've got a screen for placing new orders. So I'm gonna call that, uh, I'll call that place screen. Okay, enter. Uh, now I see I got, you know, I've got three screens. I also want a view orders screen so they can view past orders. So I'll sc slide that over. I'll call that um, my view screen. And I uh, additionally want a checkout screen. So like they make an order, add things to their cart, and then they can check out. So I'm going to make a checkout screen as well. Add that over. And I think those are the only screens I want. So I've got five screens. Good to go. They're all blank right now. That's okay. I'm just trying to build up the structure that's going to hold my app. All right, let's jump back to the login screen and actually start to fill out these screens and what they look like. So uh, this is a you know a blank white screen right now, and I don't really I don't want my screen to be white. Um, you can make whatever you want, but uh, I'm going to change my background color to something I don't know I like. I can pick over here and choose some color. I can slide through all the different possibilities. Um, I don't know. Uh, I've got a color that I already like, so I'm just going to type it in. If I know my color, I can do that too, and I happen to like that color. It's a nice, I don't know, magenta-ish color. So I'll use that. And I want that to be the color for all of my screens. So I'm going to copy that. Command C. And then uh, I'll copy and I'll just paste that to all of my screens so that they all have the same background color. Now all five of my screens have the same background color and it's going to be consistent. Okay. Now, I want to think now about my login screen. All right? I'm, I'm going to want them to be able to type their username, and I'm going to want them to be able to type the password. 
So I'm going to need uh, text inputs for that. So I'm just going to drag those in and put them, you know, I don't know, about where I want. You know, you can just sort of decide, um, you know, what suits you. Uh, put mine about here-ish, let's say. And I'll do another one. So that'll be my username. I'll do another one for the password. Um, put that a little bit lower. Let's say, I don't know, want to line up. Say right about there. Um, I want some labels. I want to say what this screen is. So we'll put a label here. Let's, let's call this uh, customer customer login. All right, I mean, that's kind of small and it's hard to see. So again, I want to change the text color. Maybe uh, I might want to change the font size. Uh, put that where I want and make it look the way I like it. Uh, so, I don't know, let's move this around. Um, let's make the font a little bigger so you can see you have a lot of options in the properties table portion of the table. Uh, let's try this. Uh, that looks better, so 24 font. Um, once again, I've got a color that I've already picked out ahead of time that I like for this, so I'm going to go ahead and type that. This is going to be my text color throughout my, uh, my app here. There's my customer login. Okay, now I also want to have uh, labels for these text boxes so people know what to type in them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that too. Um, put that here ish. I want this to say username. And again, that's hard to see, so I'm going to just steal this color, copy it, paste it, boom, password. Kind of deal. Again, I don't like that color. Paste that. Great, looks good. Uh, once they type that in, I need them to be able to log in. So uh, maybe I have a little button, right? Button here it says log in. Great, I don't like that color. Uh, I've already, like I said, I've kind of chosen the color for this as well. I like that color. And this looks pretty good, okay? Um, so one more thing that I want to think about. If they type a username and password that works, then that's great. That should take me to my activity screen. But if they type one that's invalid, I want a message to pop up. So I'm going to write another label right about here that says something like invalid username and password, right? Or uh, something like that. So incorrect username password. Okay? To change the color of this text as well. I'll make it something a little bit different. Uh, I don't know, some kind of orangey kind of something. I don't know about something like, ooh, yeah, I like that. Something like that. Now, here's the problem, though. I don't want this to show up unless they actually mistype something. So uh, I need this to be hidden. And so conveniently, there's a little option at the bottom here that makes something hidden by default. This looks good. Okay. You can always test it and run it. So if I run this, it doesn't do anything yet, but I can at least type some username. Um, now, there's no way in uh, code.org that I could find to make the password field be, you know, something hidden. Um, so that's something we'll just have to, I think, accept at this point. Um, at least there's not an easy way. Uh, we might be able to figure a way out, but we'll just leave it as letting it be visible for now. I get the button. Okay, nothing really happens, but all the elements are there and the screen looks pretty good. So I like it. Reset this, come back. This screen looks like it's pretty much done to me, right? And so hopefully you can see it's really easy to kind of build these elements together and move things around the way you like and customize them. Okay, uh, we're going to do one more screen in this video and then I'll end that uh, portion of the video, but I'll do 
you know, I'll do the other ones on my own there, and you can kind of um, we'll come back to it as we do the rest of the project here. So I want to do my place order screen. Um, so quickly do this again. We got a label. I want to say what this screen's for. It's for placing an order. Okay. Uh, I want the font to be bigger than that. I want it to be like it was for my customer screen. Let's say place an order. How's that? So we'll make that 24. Again, I, I don't like the, the color there. So I'm going to go back to my login screen and I can again just copy and paste the color. Copy that. Come back to my place and order screen. Paste it. I like it. Okay. Uh, now I want to think about what this screen is going to have. I want them to, to be able to pick a product and pick a quantity and have it show the price and then have some way to add that to the cart and then maybe like once they've added everything they want to to a cart they can go to the checkout screen right so the products I want to make sure that they can't just type anything it has to be stuff I have at the store so I'm gonna use a drop-down for that and so a drop-down looks like this it's where it lets you um, essentially pick from a number of choices right now We'll worry about setting what choices they are later because we'll actually be taking that from the database entries. But um, for now, I just want to make this the right size, the size I want it to be. Uh, this is kind of too big. Something like that, maybe. Okay, and I want a, a drop down for my, for my quantity as well. Again, I don't like this uh, color scheme here. So why don't I have these drop downs be um, kind of grayish background and white text. So we'll change this background color to something like, I don't know. Maybe we'll have it be a, a light gray and a black text. How's that? That sounds good. All zeros is black. Yeah, it looks better. Um, I also want to have, like I said, a quantity drop down. So, well, actually, you know, if I do this, it's going to be that weird color again. I can actually take this uh, drop down and I can duplicate it. If you see that button over here on the far right, there's a duplicate, and that'll create a new item with the same exact um, kind of features as the old one. So I can just take that and kind of modify it. Now quantity doesn't have to be as big. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And then I need a third one for price. Do that too. Put that kind of here. Space these out nicely. Okay. And once again, like I said, I'm not going to worry about what goes in these to start with. I mean, I guess for quantity, I could sort of think about what those options are for quantity. Uh, probably could say something like the numbers one through 10. So if I'm ready to populate those ahead of time, I can do that. Um, but like for the products, for instance, I, I'm not ready to do that because I don't know what the products are. They're coming from my database tables. And so I can't, I don't want to type those. I want to be able to pull that from the database tables. Okay. So once again, um, let's name these drop downs conveniently, right? So this first drop down is for my product. So I'm going to call that product, and then drop down I'll use DD. Okay, so now I know that's the product drop down. Same thing here. This is the quantity drop down. So I'll call that quantity underscore DD, and then here, oops, I put these in the wrong place. That's a mistake. I wanted that here. And then in the price drop down, oh, this isn't a drop down at all. The price is calculated based on um, the product and the quantity. So actually, I want to delete this. That was a mistake. Okay. 
Let's make some labels. So this is going to be the product. So we'll say product. It's going to be the quantity. Again, if I'd been smart, I would have copied these things and then they save me some time here. And then duplicate that and I'll make a price label. And then since this is going to be calculated based on these, I'll make that a label as well. But I kind of want that label to look like the drop downs. So maybe I'll make it have the same background as the drop downs. What's that background color? Do that. Do that. that empty for now. Um, maybe I can start it out at zero, no dollars. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to want to have a little add to cart button. So they'll choose a product, choose a quantity, it'll show the price for that. And then a button to add to the cart. And I don't like that color, so I'm going to go back and steal the color from my login button. Like that. And then I also want to proceed to checkout, so I'll duplicate that button right down here. Place it where I like it. Great. Again, I should probably anything I want to um, refer to later, like this button, I want to name that something more specific than button two. Button two doesn't tell me what that button does. So I'm going to say add to cart and then I'll say underscore BTN. Okay, now that's my add to cart button. Uh, we'll call this the checkout button. Okay, that looks good. So name these things well. Great. And so what we want to do is progress through each of our screens, basically just building that up from what we have drawn or thought about ahead of time uh, using the widgets that are provided to us. In the next video, we'll start to connect that to the database, and you'll see how uh, we use the code to make everything work together.